Recording in progress. Arafura and Timor Seas region, or ATS, is unique in terms of its ecology, geography, and socio-political structure. It is rich in resources and home to a vast array of natural wonders. Shared by Australia, Indonesia, Papua New Guinea, and Timor-Leste, this fertile corridor of tropical water connects the Pacific and Indian Oceans. This area provides the peoples of many nations with essential resources, while also stocking the world's oceans with biodiversity. Unfortunately, overfishing, marine and land-based pollution, loss of habitat, and the impacts of climate change create a major threat to most marine life in the region. This underlines the urgent need for a collective regional action and transboundary management of economically important fish species, critical habitats, and marine megafauna. Therefore, in 2006, the ATS Expert Forum developed and submitted a bid to the Global Environment Facility, which came to be known as the Arafura and Timor Seas Ecosystem Action Program, or ATC. The initial phase was officially launched in 2010 and created a regional collaboration tasked with finding sustainable solutions for problems affecting coastal and marine resources in the region. In 2019, 
The second phase of At Sea, known as At Sea 2, has been adapted to take the collaboration and coordination in the ATS region a step further through the endorsement Recording and implementation stopped. of a 10 year vision for the ATS, known as the Strategic Action Recording Program. In progress. It is made up of three main components. The first component focuses on strengthening the regional and national collaboration mechanism and establishing a stakeholder partnership forum to facilitate implementation of priority actions and better participatory processes. The second component focuses on developing an ecosystem approach to the fisheries management plan, strengthening the implementation of regional plan of action to combat IUU fishing, assessing marine and land-based pollution, establishing and supporting the management of marine protected areas, and developing a regional plan to enhance marine turtle protection. And the third component focuses on improving the monitoring of the ATS region and sharing knowledge gained from the project. Through the three components, at C2 aims to achieve its main objectives in the ATS to foster sustainable development in the region by improving the quality of life of its inhabitants through restoration, conservation, and sustainable management of marine coastal ecosystems for a better life.
Hello everyone, good morning from Jakarta, Indonesia. My name is Switenia Puspalastari and you can call me Tenia. And today I'm going to be your moderator for the webinar of ATSI2. And today we're going to discussing about marine and land-based pollution in the Arafura and Timor Sea region. And don't forget to prepare your drink because for the next two hours, we're going to have a fruitful discussions with various experts and, uh, on the fields. We're going to hear more from Dr. Wan Taishin, and then also we're going to hear the respondents such as from Dr. Abilio Fonseca, Mr. Dida Mikfarida, and also Ms. Adelina Melissa. Uh, and before we dig down to the issues itself and also the discussions, we're going to hear more about the ATSI and also the issue. And before I hand over to the ATSI team, I'm going to remind you that this uh, webinar is also live streamed through YouTube. So if you have any connection issues, please feel free to join us through YouTube. Uh, and the link is going to be shared by the team of ATSI through this chat box of Zoom. Uh, okay, so when talking about the marine and land-based pollution, it's one of the causes on the serious decline in the ATS region. And pollution impacts are largely attributed to poor catchment practices, mining activities, offshore oil and gas exploration, also exploitations. And the effect of fisheries, including marine debris, and also oil spill, which partly consists of discarded fishing nets and other fishing gears, is also something that is going to be focused on on today's webinar. And the ATS region is extremely rich in living and non-living marine resources, uh, and including uh, major fisheries and also oil and gas reserves. And this ATS region is located at the intersection of the two major large marine ecosystems, which is Indonesian seas to the north and northern Australian water to the south, and is also an integral part of the Coral Triangle Zone, which considered to have the highest marine biodiversity in the world. So let's hear more um, for the introduction from the Regional Project Coordinator of ATSI to himself, um, Dr. Handoko. I'm going to invite Dr. Handoko Adi Susanto to present uh, the introduction. Hi, Dr. Handoko. Hello, Tenia. Good morning. Good morning. The time is yours. Yeah, thank you, Tenia. Uh, let me share my screen. I still, I still disable uh, to share screen. Can the organizer? Yeah, uh, anyway, very good morning uh, to all of you. Uh, it's my Pleasure to welcome you to this uh, meeting. Yeah. I would like to begin my acknowledge uh, to our uh, colleague here, our distinguished uh, speaker, Dr. Wang Taishin. Good morning. And then our distinguished uh, respondents, yeah, Pak Abilio, Pak Dida, and uh, Mbak Edelina. Yeah. Then, uh, <coughs> I saw uh, our colleague here from uh, several countries uh, based on my uh, uh, data that this webinar, uh, Tenia, coming from Indonesia, US, Timor Leste, Australia, PNG, and Philippines. Uh, so, uh, welcome uh, to this uh, webinar. Yeah, we are pleased uh, to have. Uh, with us here yeah, from uh, several countries to discuss about the uh, marine uh, pollution. So uh, let me uh, brief you about this uh, webinar uh, today. So this map uh, shows the Arafura and uh, Timor Seas. Yeah? So our project is uh, covering the following uh, specific areas here. In Indonesia, we have uh, Rotendau, uh, we, have, we have Aru, and then also uh, Merauke. While in Timor Leste, uh, there are four uh, sites here in PKK, Manatuto, Opalima, as well as uh, Ninokoni Santana National Park. And then in PNG, we will focus uh, in the South Flight District of the uh, Western uh, Province. Yeah. So, uh, 
the project activities will be undertaken uh, to address uh, five uh, priority transboundary concerns, uh, namely unsustainable fisheries, modification, degradation, and loss of habitat, marine and land-based pollution, climate change impact, and key uh, species uh, loss. Yeah, so uh, <coughs> the project has a uh, five years uh, time frames, yeah, and then will be implemented under three uh, major components, uh, nine outcomes and uh, 23 uh, target output. Overall, intervention under these components are <coughs> aimed to contribute to enhance uh, the sustainable development of the marine and uh, fishery resources in the ATS uh, region. Yeah. So uh, today, specifically, we are going to discuss uh, the outcome 2.2 yeah, on the marine and land-based uh, pollution. The outcome 2.2 here is designed uh, to strengthen the enabling conditions and capacities in response to the regional priority concerns of the reducing land-based and marine source of uh, pollution. And in order to achieve uh, these outcomes, yeah, uh, we have several key output throughout the uh, five years project, including, including the completion of regional pollution hotspot analysis. Uh, we engage uh, Dr. Wong Taishin here to undertake the assessment, yeah, uh, and then undertaken in line with the uh, national assessment in Timor Leste and local assessment in Rotendau. Uh, and also the second uh, <coughs> output, strengthens a regional and local oil spill early warning system and uh, capacity, which include uh, develop local pollution prevention and control plan, and then also facilitate oil spill response and preparedness training. And the last one, facilitate a regional exchange uh, on the oil spill response and preparedness. So uh, we recognize uh, that certain challenges were encountered yeah, to uh, run this assessment, specifically due to the COVID-19 uh, and then restriction on in-person consultation and meeting, as well as uh, field observations. Uh, therefore, this morning webinar is uh, to update you uh, on the result of the regional marine and land-based pollution assessment. And then uh, we welcome input and advice uh, from uh, all of you, the participants, on the result of the assessment and uh, to, uh, what you call it, uh, to enhance uh, the recommendations. So uh, finally, uh, I hope that this event could provide you a room for comment and also uh, give an input uh, to, to us, to our assessment. I believe that, uh, yeah, as usual, my last sentence, I believe that your participation, your comment, input, and suggestion will become your significant, significant contributions to building a better ATS for tomorrow. Thank you, terima kasih, obrigado barak, over to you, Tania. Thank you, Dr. Handoko. So now we know, uh, on the objective of reducing uh, marine and land-based pollution, uh, the GEF, UNDP, PEMC, and also, of course, at C2 project has completed a regional analysis of pollution hotspots that will provide a better understanding of the current threats from marine and land-based pollution for the region. So we are going to hear more from Dr. Wan Taishin, but before we hear more uh, on the elaborations, I'm going to remind for all participants um, that you can ask the questions to Dr. Handoko or Dr. Wan Taishin right away through Zoom Q&A chat box. So on Zoom, you can see the Q&A box and then you can type directly your questions there uh, so we can answer it after um, the presentation uh, scene. And also for those of you who join through YouTube account, you can also chat your question through the live chat on YouTube. Okay, so now we're going to uh, directly see Dr. Won Tai Shin um, profile through our screen. Uh, he is such a great person. I've been talking to him on the previous webinar before. He is the CEO of Global Ocean Inc 
and he has the master and PhD degree in environmental engineering at Georgia Institute of Technology in Atlanta, USA. And he joined PAMSI uh, as the program specialist since 2007. And he has worked for the government of RO Korea and also the Ministry of Oceans and Fisheries um, and also established consulting firm in RO Korea since 2011. And of course, in ATSI, he is the project consultant in marine and land-based pollution assessment. And also, he has lots of uh, achievements and also experiences in this field. So I'm going to just invite him right away. Dr. Won Taishin, hello. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you very much for a wonderful introduction. Yeah, thank you <laughs> for having us here. So I'm okay. going to give the floor to you, and you can uh, directly share your screen. Thank okay, you. Uh, let me share my screen. All right. Uh, all right. Uh, thank you very much. Um, uh, today, as uh, uh, Dr. Handoko and uh, Tanya introduced me, I'm uh, Won Tae Shin. I'm uh, from Korea, but I'm living in Manila, Philippines, and then I was uh, commissioned from the ASEAN Secretariat testing marine and land-based pollution in ATS region. And then uh, I may give you a brief background about the ASEAN project. Uh, this project was implemented as a part of uh, JEP International Water Portfolio on LME uh, project. And there are several pro uh, LME projects as YSLME. I was a work as, uh, in the uh, Secretariat of YSLME uh, before. And then uh, LME project has uh, five modules, as you can see here, pollution and biodiversity, fisheries, governance, and socioeconomic modules. So to assess the sustainable development. And then in 2011, uh, TDA was developed and then uh, the previous study identified several issues and threats. And then uh, uh, following that, a uh, strategic action program was uh, developed and then uh, it, it lay out what to do next. And then uh, JEP Secretariat uh, provide more funding for ASEAN 2 project to implement uh, some of the uh, sub programs. And the one of them is a marine and land-based pollution hotspot analysis. So this is uh, what I'm going to uh, present to you today that uh, what I have found in the assessment of a marine and land pollution, uh, land based pollution hotspots in uh, ASEAN region. And I'm trying to do the qualitative, uh, quantitative study, including modeling, uh, to identify where the hotspot located. And okay, uh, this is the uh, snapshot of uh, why. Uh, ATS reason is important. As you can see, uh, the black dot, a uh, black spot here is a uh, uh, primary production. It's uh, about the black area is uh, more than 300. So it, 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 you can see that the white, the yellow sea is uh, entirely black. So lots of um, thing happening in the yellow sea. At the same time, uh, in uh, ASI reason, uh, actually, Aru, uh, Aru Island, around adjacent area, uh, it shows a high productivity. So there are lots of uh, fishing activity going on in this, particularly in this area. So this region shows a uh, high productivity. And <clears throat> um, Karen showed that um, we, uh, in ASI region, uh, like um, uh, fisheries is very important, especially in Indonesian part, like nine, more than 90% of the fishers and fish cash coming from the Indonesia. And then uh, uh, Timor uh, Sea and Ar Arafura Sea, uh, there are actively uh, fishing going on. And this is the, the map of the Arafura Timor Sea region. Uh, why uh, Arafura Timor Sea region is important because it's, it has a high productivity marine ecosystem, more than 300 gram carbon per uh, square meter per year. So um, rich in living and non-living marine resources, uh, fish 
fisheries. And at the same time, in Timor Sea, there are oil and gas reserves. Uh, there are huge amount of oil and gas. So there are a lot of extraction going on there. But you have a lot of fish. That's why there are lots of fishing boats coming to. And then uh, as a result, there's an over-exploited ecosystem uh, is the consequences. Over the past several centuries, many of Indonesia, uh, coral reef have been heavily and chronically overfished. So this is the uh, consequences of uh, having high productive um, uh, seas around our region. And then uh, over-exploited stocks, uh, many uh, species of reef fish, uh, groupers, and then snappers, and then endangered species like sea turtle and dugong is uh, uh, on, on the threat. So marine ecosystem is under threat in Arafura Timor Seas, a high risk of oil pollution and overfishing and marine debris, including direct fishing gears. So I have uh, uh, done a DPSIR analysis in this study. This is a uh, uh, similar uh, to the uh, causal chain uh, analysis, uh, which have done in 2011 for the T <clears throat> TDA study. And so uh, drivers is a uh, uh, loss of capture fisheries and over extraction at the platforms in, in uh, especially in Timor Sea and coast and marine uh, mining development around the coastal area and ag agricultural development at the coastal area. So these are uh, giving a pressure to the uh, marine ecosystem. And the state is now uh, a loss of direct fishing gears present in the sea and the overfishing and IOU fishing and the litters and then or spillage from fishing boat and the, from the oil extraction, um, a loss of um, uh, habitats under threat of oil spill and then uh, uh, so, so on and so forth, so many uh, prob problems exist. And then we need, uh, the impacts are significant, and then we need to respond uh, to these uh, drivers and impacts. And in, in 2011, uh, also TDA study identified lots of uh, sources, uh, nutrients, and the sediment, toxic and oil spill, and marine debris. Uh, these were identified in 2011. And then I have uh, confirmed uh, this is still true in 2000 uh, at the present time. So uh, we have uh, uh, in Rote Endau Regency, we have uh, conducted a, a, um, a study, a survey to the coastal resident about their perception on pollution. Uh, they respond among the several, uh, several uh, sources. Uh, they responded that oil spill from wellhead platform is uh, very much concern to them. And then the second most concern is the marine litter, uh, solid waste, and then uh, 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 is about the solid waste uh, coming from the land to sea. So we, we now see that the reason, are why, reason why the concern, we can identify uh, two issues. One is uh, oil spill, and the other is marine debris, including plastics and the direct fishing gears. Uh, the others, um, uh, pollution sources like um, nutrients, animal and sewers, and sedimentation, uh, and then uh, you know, pesticides uh, from local sources. These are, uh, we can uh, classify as lo localized pollution concerns. So in this regional study, I was, um, uh, I, this study, uh, focuses on uh, the reason why the pollution concerns, which is uh, oil spill and marine debris, including plastics and direct fishing gears. Okay, uh, first uh, hotspot analysis is uh, uh, oil spill. Uh, there are, uh, this map um, developed by a Northern Territory Government of Australia uh, shows a lot of activities um, currently ongoing uh, in Arafura Timor Sea, especially Timor Sea. And then this, this map was uh, developed in 2001 uh, and then still um, is uh, in, intact. And then uh, <clears throat> oil spilled uh, oil developed in Timor Sea 
has uh, uh, some uh, long history. Uh, it started in 1979, and then uh, uh, oil um, development started in the uh, like uh, 2000. So um, now <clears throat> uh, this red spot, uh, uh, rec like a like this area, we call it Joint Petroleum Development Area, APDA, but uh, this area is uh, no longer ex exist because of uh, um, the Maritime Boundary Treaty between Australia and uh, Timor-Leste signed in 2018. And then this area become the territory of uh, uh, Timor-Leste entirely. Now, uh, there are several <clears throat> several oil extraction ongoing in this uh, JPDA. And then another area is Ashmore and Cartier Island adjacent area. This area uh, is entirely uh, belong to Australian government. And then uh, you see the Montara uh, oil well located in here. And Buffalo oil well is uh, uh, located here. And then Greater Sunrise oil field located here. So these three area is uh, quite important to this study. So the implication of the um, uh, maritime boundary treaty uh, is that um, you know, more responsibility of oil spill goes, spill goes to Timor-Leste because this entire JPDA area is belong to uh, Timor-Leste now. And then uh, this two, uh, this area, uh, Wayu Undan is here, oil field is here, but this is uh, 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 depleting and then uh, the lifetime expectancy will end next year. So the other oil field like a sunrise, greater sunrise, and then Buffalo will be faster, developed in faster pace in a in, uh, in few years. In one of the most significant oil spill in this um, <clears throat> in this area is a Montara wellhead uh, oil spill in 2000, uh, 2009. It's about the <clears throat> about the 250 kilometer from Rote Island and then 250 kilometer from uh, from north northwest Australian coast. So it's a uh, about the middle area of the Timor Sea. And then oil escaped, and then about uh, 90 day, 75 days, and about uh, like like uh, 300 barrels a day, and then uh, cleanup happened in in like uh, 90 days. Uh, this map shows uh, the oil or spread, oil slick spread. The yellow, uh, the green uh, area is the, the monitored area, but uh, the blue blue uh, scattered area is the uh, modeling result. And then uh, there are uh, a controversy exists in uh, oil spill amount and then the area spilled. So there are um, uh, cases, lawsuit cases happen because of the uh, Rote and Dao. Uh, Indonesian farmers, they claim that um, they have uh, uh, damages because of the oil spill, but uh, the company, uh, PTTEP said that the oil not reached to uh, road, uh, Indonesian boundary, so uh, they didn't uh, pay any compensation to Indonesian uh, farmers. So they, uh, uh, Indonesian farmer, uh, submit a law case in 2010, and recently in 2021, uh, just last month, and then uh, Australian court um, um, ordered. Uh, uh, PTTEP to pay the Indonesian uh, farmer uh, a lump sum amount of the compensation, but uh, this lawsuit will uh, will be uh, continued uh, in in uh, a few years, I expect. But uh, the ruling is that um, uh, the court um, accepted that uh, scientific finding that uh, that Indonesian. Um, farmers have affected uh, by the oil spill. Uh, I have some, uh, brought some uh, scientific data uh, uh, produced by species and, uh, and his colleagues about uh, seaweed declining and then fisheries landing declining uh, in 
in the area. And then uh, when the oil spill happened, you know, OSR uh, deployed the Hercules C C-130 uh, for the spread of the uh, dispersant. And then Australia and government also deployed uh, um, airplanes uh, to remediate the uh, uh, oil in that area. So uh, when, when the oil spill happens, uh, the impact is huge. Actually, Korea also had a, a huge oil spill instances in, in 2007 or so. So where is the hotspot now then? Um, as, as you can see that uh, now the boundary of JPDA is um, uh, belong to the uh, Timor-Leste government. 100% uh, Timor-Leste territorial sea now, and then oil, oil development might be accelerated <clears throat> because of the petroleum revenue decreased in, uh, in uh, Timor-Leste. As you can see, uh, they have a petroleum revenue, uh, a petroleum fund, and it is uh, decreasing. So um, with the uh, <clears throat> maritime boundary treaty, this become entirely belong to uh, Timor Leste and the greater sunrise uh, oil field and Buffalo and Laminaria oil field will be developed further, uh, faster. So, what this means that uh, when oil spill happens, uh, this area belong uh, responsibility belong to the Timor Leste government. And then uh, the the question is the are are uh, Timor Leste uh, ready for the um, oil spill? And then, uh, you know, um, when the oil spill happens, uh, I try to identify where is the most vulnerable area in, um, in the AC region. So I use the uh, GNOME, uh, a modeling uh, program, we call it GNOME. It's a general NOAA operating modeling environment. This is a free and then easy to use. So, but the data mining is a little bit difficult. So I, I was, I get the help from the Korea Environment Institute in Korea. So I was uh, uh, able to extract um, necessary data from the, uh, the web. And then I put into the program and the simulated the oil spill. Um, the, the program works like this, you know, you put uh, current and wind uh, uh, modeling data into the program and then you identify where the location of the oil spill um, places and the, what type of oil and how much oil is uh, spilling a day. Then the program is uh, uh, simulating where, how the oil fl flumes uh, are drifting to, um, to uh, after the release of the uh, release of the oil. So now we in these five uh, spots. So for like um, like a uh, ten days, actually ten uh, fifteen days. So I simulated. Uh, so uh, you can see the oil is uh, dispersing to the sea. At, at the same time, uh, like like this, I I um, uh, put this. Um, uh, GNOME simulation for Buffalo oil oil rig oil rig. You know, Buffalo is in the formerly known JPDA area, and then this is very close to the uh, Timor Timor Island, and then uh, uh, this is uh, belong to the now belong to uh, Timor Leste responsibility, and then uh, uh, the the similar I use the similar um, uh, data for for Montara oil leak incident, like 90 days of oil spill and 300 barrels per day. So this is uh, uh, the red red dot is um, a buffalo, a buffalo oil rig. And then each square is like a 90 days of oil spill. So, and then from January, and this uh, this is uh, April 1st and to, to June, so 90 days, and then August, to uh, uh, October 31st for 90 days, and then October to November. So I I tried to see entire year in 2018, so so that uh, we can see how the oil spill uh, dispersed 
into um, this reason for 90 days. So this is a very fast, so you, you see that. And, and if you can see, the oil is dispersing uh, to, to the land area. Uh, mostly uh, the, uh, the Timor Island and the Rote Island here, Rote Island here, uh, they are the, we can see that they are the hotspot of the oil spill. Uh, spill. And so um, this is very obvious that uh, we need to prepare for the oil spill in this entire southern coast of the uh, Timor Island and the Rota Island. These are the vulnerable area of the oil spill. So now the oil spill uh, preparedness and response system. In Australia, they have uh, built, uh, they have everything now. Uh, you know, they have OPRC and then OPRC NHS, and then uh, they have a bilateral cooperation with the Indonesia and Timor Leste. But this is the, the their uh, divisional responsibility of um, Australia. So outside of the three nautical, nautical mile is outside of the territorial sea. So these are uh, when the when the oil spill happens, the responsibility goes to the, the oil company. So when the Montara happens, so the the and uh, PTT EA, uh, they they mobilized, um, you know, they collaborate with the AMSA and then uh, they try to um, clean up the, uh, the, the spilled oil. But as you can see, the companies, they try to limit their uh, spread of oil and then uh, that eventually happened to the Indonesian water, but uh, they, they didn't, uh, they denied the claim. So uh, we have eventually a lawsuit and then the last of people, um, you know, suffer from the consequences of the oil spill. And Indonesia, they set up a oil spill national consensus plan in 2007. And then uh, um, OPRC, they are about to ratify, but uh, when it happens, uh, we, we don't know yet. But Timor Leste and Papua New Guinea, they haven't uh, ratified the, um, the OPRC and OPRC HNS. So as, especially OPRC is a very important, uh, you know, international international uh, agreement uh, for the oil spill. And then uh, we need to ratify this OPRC. And then uh, in this region, uh, RC region, we need uh, a regional contingency plan uh, so that we can prepare for the or possible oil spill happening in the coming years. So now <clears throat> the gap of oil spill governance is that uh, lack of oil spill response materials and cap capable personnel. I think uh, Australia has the uh, responsible material and uh, capacity, but uh, how about other countries in the ASEAN region? So we need to uh, have, um, we need to mobilize when the oil spill happens, we need to mobilize the res responsible materials in the, uh, from, the, um, from other countries. Mm, but uh, is it uh, possible now without any uh, regional agreement? So uh, what we need is re recent cooperation agreement is, is limited. We have a bilateral uh, agreement, but regional agreement is necessary. And then uh, ratifying of PRC is limited. So we, we need to ratify this. Okay, next. So the, the, uh, the other hotspot is uh, marine debris. Okay, re marine, uh, regarding marine debris, uh, definitely, marine debris is a um, fairly a a a hot issue globally. And then we uh, we can see um, we can uh, EU identify uh, EU is uh, uh, very fast in acting uh, marine debris. They call it marine litter, and then we call it marine debris because uh, ASEAN countries they uh, they decided to use marine debris instead of marine litter. But uh, marine litter and marine debris is uh, interchangeably used. So there are two, uh, two, two main types of uh, marine debris, land-based and the sea-based. And then uh, we, we can see, uh, um, you know, lots of plastics, plastics um, produced in uh, every year, like 270 million tons um, every year. And then eventually 8 million tons 
uh, goes to the ocean and then uh, this will affect the marine life. So we have uh, five types of uh, marine litter, beach litter, which drift uh, the plastics, mainly plastics drift to the, to the beach area. And then uh, water and seafloor, seafloor, we call it the uh, seafloor litter. And then uh, there's a water column and then uh, litter in biota and then microplastic. But in acid reason, we, we want to uh, focus on two, uh, two types of uh, litters. One is a beach litter and then the other is seafloor litters. As, as I said, uh, two, two uh, liters floating debris, mostly plastic, and then uh, deposited uh, debris, mostly direct fishing gears. So as um, you know, um, monitoring of the fishing gears, uh, direct fishing gear is a very, uh, very rare and hard. And then uh, we have uh, um, Ed Vane and Penny, um, Karen did a study in 2007, 17 uh, published a, a study and then we see that um, uh, there are a uh, troll and uh, a gill net and drip net is a most dominant um, uh, net type in the uh, northern Australian territory and then uh, regarding the shoreline uh, debris I tried to find uh, a study around the ASI region uh, how they um, you know assess the uh, uh, marine debris. In Australia, in Australia state of environment in 2016, they assessed that the that, that, um, impact is high and then uh, the impact will be worsened in the future. But I, I didn't find, uh, I didn't find a, a qualita uh, quantitative uh, data from Australia, but the uh, Australian government think that the uh, marine debris issue will be worsened in the future. And Timor Leste, uh, we have uh, like uh, one study I found in 2017, and I believe that uh, uh, Dr. Fonseca and then uh, uh, conducted a study in uh, Timor Leste recently, uh, 2020, 2020, and then I didn't quote here, but uh, anyway, I, what I found was in uh, 2017, uh, they have, uh, um, they one times, this is a one time study using uh, volunteers about 300 kilogram of the uh, deposits, uh, mostly uh, plastic, rubber, cloth, and glass. And then Indonesia, they have uh, also studied uh, marine, uh, there is hotspot study, and then the, the most the closest uh, hotspot they studied is uh, Oesina in the Kupang Residency, and then uh, relative, uh, 3.23 kilogram per square meter uh, they found. And in the uh, international coastal cleanup, uh, this is happening uh, in every September around the, around the world. And then Australia, Indonesia, they reported uh, the data in 2020. And then uh, you, you can see that um, uh, Indonesia shows uh, much higher uh, there is than Australia, but um, uh, we we don't know where uh, um, how how long. Um, you know, this is a, a relatively uh, non-conclusive because um, this is a uh, the one-time uh, survey of the marine debris is uh, quite uh, tricky to uh, interpret because you know we don't know the time frame accumulated uh, uh, accumulation of the uh, um, the marine debris on the sh uh, on the beach, uh, and then uh, the 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 conclusion we can say is that uh, shoreline debris hotspots might be the near the major city because a major city produces a lot of uh, solid waste, and then they are uh, drifting drifting to the sea eventually, and then they, they file up uh, near the beaches. And then uh, it's uh, hard to identify uh, due to lack of scientific data. Uh, for example, this coastal cleanup uh, campaign data is uh, uh, we don't we cannot say this is a uh, scientific data because uh, this is a one-time ac activity as an uh, awareness building. Uh, what we need is uh, a continuous, a regular 
and long-term monitoring of shoreline the risk assessment so that uh, you know when uh, you clean and then uh, after several uh, regular interval how how much uh, how much the risk is accumulating you, know, you can monitor and then you can see that whether the risk is uh, declining or increasing I can show you, I, I will show you later in Korean case. They have been conducted like 15 years of uh, study on the uh, marine debris monitoring and then show them uh, how this works. So, and then regarding the seafloor debris, and then uh, Karen uh, published in 2017 that, uh, you know, a North Australian chef, uh, LME, there's, there's a, a gill net and then a trawl, uh, Midwater trawl and stream trawl is the uh, dominant types of uh, uh, the fishing gear used in the in this area. And then uh, you can see that um, the Gilman published that uh, the relative um, uh, gear specific relative risk uh, from the gear is that um, you know um, the most uh, gill net gill net is a uh, uh, very very damaging to the ecosystem, and then. Uh, bottom trawl also uh, um, uh, highly uh, damaging, uh, so risk is uh, high. So uh, we we found that, that there are lots of fishing activity happening in the Arafura Timor Sea, and then uh, the the most of the uh, fishing gear they use is a gill net and the, and and then uh, the trawl net. So eventually if you have a, a lot of uh, fishing activity then then you will have a lot of fishing gear lost so uh, it will accumulate at the bottom this is the same true in the yellow sea we have a lot of uh, uh, the, uh, fishing gear deposited in the yellow sea this has been the pro problem between china and korea now if you can see the global fishing watch they are uh, recorded from 2012 to current 2020 and then you can, uh, they identify three methods, uh, um, automatic identification system, and nightlight vessel detection system, and Indonesian vessel management system. So uh, Indonesia joined the Global Fishing Watch, and then they are providing their VAMS data, and then we can see the VAMS of uh, Indonesian um, data. So. Uh, we can see that uh, this area, Aru, Aru Island and adjacent area is uh, heavily fished. And then a uh, lot of fishing vessel visit there. And then we, will, we can see that, um, we can conclude that, that this area might be the, uh, the direct fishing gear um, hotspot in the uh, in Timo, uh, at Arafra Timor Sea. And uh, the other uh, hotspot might be um, near the uh, JPDA area. This also heavily uh, fished. Okay, so now um, my conclusion is this uh, that uh, ship lord there is hotspot in Ad Arafurati Asi region is that um, Araf Aru Island and the Jason area. Uh, this is a fishing hotspot at the same time, foreign uh, fishing hotspot. So uh, Global Fish Wash uh, pro um, published a, a study in 2019 that, that they monitor uh, the, the foreign fishing effort. And uh, so if you, it is very interesting that 2012 to 2014, there are this Aru area, Aru Island area, uh, there are uh, heavy uh, foreign vessel fishing. But now, uh, 2015 to now, uh, they, the foreign vessel fishing significantly reduced and then almost non-existent in our area. Uh, they said that uh, this is um, IUU fishing um, uh, program is activated and that they did a, a very good job. And then um, but this is the effect of the uh, IUU um, program. So uh, this is uh, highly effective, we can say that. But um, the conclusion is that this area is the uh, hotspot for seafloor debris. Now, uh, regarding the... <coughs> Uh, environment uh, oil spill, we, we need to um, uh, prepare for the possible oil spill. Uh, one, uh, one method is uh, developing oil spill uh, uh, environmental sensitivity index map. 
So this is uh, uh, right side of the photo. Uh, the map here is the uh, the the one study result of the uh, north uh, Jak uh, nor north south Sumatra uh, province uh, ESI index uh, developed by our friend uh, Damar and company, and then uh, they identified the physical uh, index and then biological index and social index. So why we are developing this uh, ESI map? Because you know we, we have a limited resources for responding to oil spills. So where we need to first, uh, uh, you know, mobilize those resources. So we need to identify the area that we need to mobilize our resources. So prioritize the area. Now, so in this map, uh, this, this red area is a very sensitive. So we need to mobilize our resources in this area when the, uh, when the oil spill happens. Now, physical index is uh, like uh, you identify like uh, or, uh, a shoreline type. We can, uh, we can uh, develop this as a site visit or uh, you know, satellite study. And as you can see, the mud flat and then uh, so tidal flat and swamp and mangrove uh, highest vulnerability because there are a lot of um, uh, biodiversity there. And then biological index and social index, this is uh, from IPICA, we can identify this, uh, these two, um, you know, so sensitive species and protected area and sens diverse sensitive uh, species. And then we can identify uh, high and low. Uh, in this, in, uh, in this method, using this method, I can, uh, I have applied this method to the Rote and Dao area. So we, with the one to 25,000 scale, uh, I identify area one, two, three, four. And then uh, I have identified the Rote and Dao. Area one is the hotspot of the Rote and Dao among the uh, Arafura Timorse. Actually, uh, Ga area is this is the house, should be hotspot, but this is outside of the ASI region. So uh, I choose that the uh, uh, Rote Barataya, a Kosa area, as a hotspot. And then I try to develop the Rote and now um, Rote Barataya as a hotspot of oil spill, and then develop the ESI map. Like a physical vulnerability using a satellite image, there are and then uh, uh, biodiversity information, I got it from the survey. And then uh, if you apply a social, biological and social economic vulnerability, you, you can uh, uh, put a lot of uh, uh, information in this map. There are aquaculture and the fishing ground, and then a vulnerable, vulnerable species there. And then uh, 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 Batutua, there are uh, some uh, social economic ut utility of this area. So now, if this is uh, only uh, for uh, example, because we we haven't, I haven't been there, and then uh, uh, with the limited information, I was uh, uh, trying to develop the ESI map. But this is uh, for demonstration purposes only. But uh, you can develop uh, this uh, this map. Uh, for the entire coastal area of uh, Timor Sea and then Timor Island and then uh, Rote Island. And then uh, we, uh, according to this map, when the oil spill happens, we can mobilize our resources. Uh, as I said, uh, we have um, um, conducted a pollution perception survey in Rote and Dao, uh, coastal residences, res residents of the Rote and Dao um, Rote and residency, and then 643 coastal residents. Uh, they think that uh, um, you know land-based pollution is not that uh, serious, but they think that uh, sea-based pollution is very serious. So this means that uh, coastal residents uh, they think that um, the um, uh, the sea-based pollution, especially I said, um, I showed the marine debris and the oil pollution is a serious. And then, uh, uh, and then a very in interesting result is that uh, they consider marine animal as a very important. They they know the fishers, coastal residents, res residents, they know that 
the importance of uh, uh, marine animals. And then uh, if uh, they are willing to release uh, when they are, they caught the marine animal, like uh, turtles and dugongs, and then the whales and the dolphins. So um, key message is this, the sea-based pollution is more important to coastal residents and marine debris and oil spill as a primary concern and high positive awareness on the importance of the marine life. So, um, you know, uh, the, it, this is a very interesting um, response that the coastal residents, they are aware of the importance of the uh, marine animals. Okay, now conclusion is this. Uh, ATS region is a highly productive and seen resources, fisheries resources and oil and gas reserves. And the ATS region is under threat of oil spill and marine debris. Numerous oil rigs actively operating and then future development is uh, predicted also. Lack of regional collaborative platform for oil spill response. And then like the uh, DIC is uh, uh, under operation, but only Indonesia is a member because uh, uh, they are the member of uh, um, uh, the ASEAN. So, but uh, this kind of uh, program we need to uh, implement in the, in this uh, Arafura Timor Sea region. And oil spill simulation at Buffalo oil field suggests that coastal area of Timor and Rote Island are vulnerable to oil spill, spilled oil. So now my recommendation is that uh, we, the country should ratify the OFRC 1990 because this is uh, uh, the first step to responding to uh, oil spill. And then uh, we need to develop a regional platform for oil spill response. Like, uh, you know, uh, we, I, I put here the Gulf of Thailand uh, regional oil spill uh, contingency plan. So we, we can uh, develop this kind of a joint collaboration, co collaborative uh, platform so that uh, we can mobilize the resources when the oil spill happening. And then uh, reason, uh, establish a regional monitoring program on marine debris is necessary because, you know, we, uh, I tried to conclude which area and then, and then impact of the, uh, the marine debris, but uh, the data is limited. And then uh, we need a long-term survey of the uh, marine debris because, you know, one-time survey doesn't say much because you cannot uh, compare with others and then you cannot say it's a heavy or lower because of the time time effect. So as I said, uh, I'd like to uh, introduce the marine debris uh, monitoring in Korea. So uh, in they are running a national marine litter monitoring program since 2008, 2008 and then they have uh, uh, 20 size around the country, but now in 2015, they increased the 20 more sites. Uh, I have uh, been uh, commissioned by the Korean government and I identified 20 more, more uh, sites using the uh, UNEP guideline. Monitoring site, uh, selection of monitoring site is uh, quite tricky because you have a uh, considered lots of uh, uh, criteria. And then uh, uh, 25 NGOs, they survey bi-monthly. So six times a, month, uh, a year, they are going there and then uh, the set uh, transact that they are monitoring, they are collecting and counting. And then this is a quite scientific method. And then uh, they are measuring number, volume, and weight. And then they are identifying domestic and foreign debris. So whether uh, you, there's uh, some skills so you can identify whether it's a domestic litter or uh, foreign litter. So uh, after like 2018 to 2019, uh, 16, uh, more than 10 years of data, we can clearly conclude that the uh, marine debris is decreasing in the decreasing trend. So domestic debris is decreasing, but the foreign debris is uh, relatively stable. So uh, what I'm, what I can suggest is that uh, we need to have this kind of monitoring program around the ASEAN region so that we can identify and assess marine debris pro problem in this area. Thank you very much. I'm done and then uh, uh, thank okay. you. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Shin. It really uh, okay. is 
an interesting uh, presentation. Okay. I bet it is really hard to compile everything <laughs> and, yes, right. and to make sure that everybody is understanding in just yes. uh, under 30 minutes. Thank yes. you for that. Okay. And I'm just going to remind for all participants that you can start to ask your questions to Dr. Sheen through the Q&A box. And before we read out your questions, we're going to hear more from the respondents that we already collect from three experts on various countries. So Dr. Shin, please stand by and please All take right. note on the reactions or the sure. feedback from these um, respondents. Okay, excellent presentation, Dr. Shin. So uh, there's a lot of um, feedback from the participants through chats. Okay, so right away, we're going to start the reaction or the uh, respondent session. And we do have three experts, as what I said before. So let's see the first profile of the first respondent that's coming from Timor-Leste. Uh, he is Dr. Abilio de Fonseca. He is the lecturer on National University of Timor-Leste. And he is also a part of UNDP Timor-Leste consultant for marine and land-based pollution study on the southern coast of Timor-Leste. He has a strong background in climate change, fisheries, and also environmental management and policy with more than 30 years of experiences. He also a part of policy and life with the government of Timor-Leste and also work extensively on international environmental issues. So I'm going to invite Dr. Abilio to the stage. Hello, Dr. Abilio. Hello, we, we cannot hear you clearly now. Um, yes. Let me check. Okay, hello. We can hear you clearly hello. now. Okay, so yes, uh, the committee will help to share the screen for you. But I believe maybe uh, you can um, make your phone a little bit, uh, make your face full. So... Okay the participants can see your face clearly because now we only see half of your face. Okay. Oh, great, thank you. Okay, uh, your time is yours. Uh, there will be 10 minutes. 10 minutes, okay. Thank you very much. Um, um, first of all, um, I'd like to appreciate uh, your uh, Dr. Shin presentation. This is, um, well done, you know. Um, he um, identified many evidences, issues, and challenges, not only from uh, Australia, but also Timor-Leste, Indonesia, last you know, couple, of, couple of years. This is a great job. And um, I have a very soft reaction to your presentation. Um, uh, there are some gaps that in your report that have uh, been identified by myself and my colleagues in Timor Leste. Um, even you mentioned you, um, you didn't insert yet um, um, the, the current study, but we remind again you that it's possible to I know compile all present um, you know uh, data to be collected in Timor-Leste are typically from um, south, um, from uh, southern coast, from Indonesia, including PNZ and Australia, if any. Um, I um, actually did a very comprehensive data collection. Uh, it's not only uh, with the households and um, uh, coastal fishermen, but also with the uh, you know, uh, with, uh, with, with um, local expertise, success, uh, uh, official, officials from fisheries, from um, livestock, from agriculture, from environment, from forestry in each project site. And also we um, held many workshops at uh, district levels. And at the end, we also conduct a um, uh, national validation also. The national validation also has held in, in Delhi and we invite a lot of um, you know, key government agencies and NGOs and academic to, you know, to solicit their comments and feedback on the marine and land-based uh, pollution. 
So at the end, uh, we um, uh, have had um, developed two reports. One report is associated with the hospital report that, uh, on marine and land-based pollution. And the second report is on gaps analysis is more associated with legislation, capacity building, institutional arrangement, socioeconomic uh, assessment that will um, more related to um, oil spills and marine debris. So I think it's very important information that need to be uh, adjusted to your report. And then I think you need to segregate them, which issues, challenges, and opportunities that can be addressed uh, collectively at regional level and which issues um, need to be uh, addressed at country level. So then at, at the end, this, this idea can be uh, the part of a regional program and then later on you come with some you know good instruments or tools or to, to do the monitoring and evaluation uh, to share the benefits. So one example one uh, one example is are you fishing? In our point of view, in our study, it shows that IO fishing is not only um, illegal fishing in our, our country, in our um, uh, marine water, but also it brings a lot of source of debris that intentionally and unintentionally dump it to the water. We did uh, observation through Global Fishing Watch. Um, you can see the, the first um, map, the more western map. You know, it's uh, about 330 vessels and boats, uh, you know, were operating not only in, on the on the northern coast but also south southern coast. You know the white color is uh, is, is is the marine debris. It is very uh, you know I, I you fishing is very potential to produce marine debris, and you are suffering from that um, that um, illegal fishing. So. Um, If you can see in the next slide, next, um, yes, this one, it shows the source of marine debris that we are um, we monitoring at the exclusive, exclusive economic zone and GPDA waters from 15 April to 20 May 2020. You know, there are most of, um, um, boats are operating, we're operating in, on the southern coast. You see the white colors is uh, all debris that, uh, you know, accumulated on the southern coast. Some of that near was Indonesia on the southern, in the west coast, in Markupang and Katambua, and also close to Australia. Next one is also uh, we observed during this our study from August to October 2020 and December to January 21 is uh, uh, you know the west uh, boats from we believe from from Bali you know the, you see the the line is from Bali and uh, you know operating on the southern southern coast and it's very um, a potential to um, and then release more uh, debris to the southern coast. So we, if you can do the, the um, you know, uh, mitigation of the IU fishing at regional level, and at the same time, it can, it can facilitate us to reduce marine debris as well. Because Timor-Leste, we have no, you know, our people are concentrated on the northern coast. They have a people more, uh, 1.2 million, you know, the 66 percent are, are located on the northern coast, and the rest is on the southern coast. So they produce very, very few amounts of the debris on the southern coast. There is no, you know, you know, no industry over there. There is no. It's only small kiosks that they sell, you know, uh, small um, aqua bottles that we bought from from the border, from from Pupa, from Atambua on the border. 
So it's very few. So again, uh, if you can join this, if you can uh, combat the IO fishing in the same time, you can reduce and mitigate marine debris. So next, I try to explain a climate change adaptation and mitigation measures. So uh, everybody knows that climate change is challenging us. Is a big problem not only in in Indonesia, in at it is 80 80 years country, but our overall country that we need uh, we need to uh, mitigate, we need to reduce, we need to do the adaptation and mitigation in sustainable way. So through the regional cooperation, I think uh, we need to recall all countries to implement when in protocol conveys ob obligations at country level such as UNFCC, Vienna Convention, Montreal Protocol, and Kyoto Protocol. It's all related to uh, climate change, uh, uh, typically in relation to our global warming, or um, see um, what's called uh, our blanket, ozone layer. So, well, it is long time process, mitigation is a long time process, but you need to really work on that because from our data, there are many countries that still import uh, CFC, uh, chlorofluorocarbons, success from Malaysia, from Singapore, from China, from Indonesia, Timor Leste. It means that they have only stock success R12, R22, that is very harm, very, very potential to, you know, to uh, destroy our uh, ozone layer. So you need to really work, the government really to face out these uh, CFCs by 2025, by 2030, and then replace the new technology that which um, are environmentally friendly, such as R32, R4108, and also R417, etc. This is why Climate change is very important with marine debris. You know, as I mentioned before, that Timor Leste produces very small amounts of the debris, as we observe it, as we found during our study on the southern coast as well as on, its, on the northern coast. It, uh, in 2015, 2017, as Dr. Shin just presented. So uh, it's different. As you mentioned in your report, uh, the success Australia, source of activities in Australia and Indonesia, not from overseas, but concentrated in, in urban centers. This makes sense for us because you have a lot of people. And this, we are suffering from, from, from uh, you know, uh, neighbor countries actually. So, sorry to say that, but this is um, what you observed during our study. So the, these debris are transported from Timor Leste from uh, from from probably from Australia, probably we believe from Indonesia because Indonesia is highest is highest than uh, Australia as you mentioned, and then it comes it, it comes with you know a strong current winds during uh, wet season, so the the the, the debris, debris is uh, peaked in in March and June every every year. Apart from this wet season, for, for example, in dry season, it's very small. It's just few amounts of the types that we found during our our uh, uh, study. Dr. For instance, Abilia, here, yep. you still have two minutes to explain the rest of four slides. Just okay, reminding. Thank you. Thank, 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 you. You. Oh, thank you. Okay. So this is the very small items collected during our field from August to uh, October. It's only six hundred and twenty-six items for four uh, project site. So it's very small. So the biggest is plastic 42% and the lowest is glasses. So only four items that you found uh, quite big in the on the southern coast. So the reason of cooperation is we need to, to combat IO fishing, climate change adaptation. And then it's enabling us, enabling, we create enabling conditions to uh, uh, to do the monitoring and evaluation together. The monitoring and evaluation is, is typically to share responsibilities, share benefits, and share resources success 
share human resource technology and also funding, so and also resource research. So by, by doing so, we can reserve reserve our resources at ATS. So this program that if you insert these ideas, the programs that we have been uh, articulating in our report is very congruent with your recommendation. In your recommendation section, you mentioned the establishment of a regional platform of the oil and spill response and regional contingency program. This is a very good idea, but you need really to identify issues, challenges, and problems that you face each country that can be implemented at regional level. So I come to my suggestion, my conclusion. Conclusion is the report doesn't refer to our hospital. Okay, um, I think something happening with the connection of Dr. Abilio, but I believe um, the presentation is all clear. Um, so I'm going to move on to the next uh, respondent, uh, which we can see the profile of uh, the respondent directly through our screen. So uh, right away, we're going to see the profile of Bapak uh, Insinyur Dida Mikfarida, he is the Executive Director of Regional Capacity Center for Clean Seas. He's coming from Indonesia and also the Director of Coastal and Marine Pollution and Degradation Control at Ministry of Environment and Forestry in Republic of Indonesia. He has the degree on Master in Economics on IPB University in Indonesia with more than 27 years work experiences in environment sector, <coughs> especially as government official and policymaker, I believe uh, Mr. Dida can actually give feedbacks uh, with his experts. Okay, so uh, Bapak Dida, hello. Hello, Tadia. Great to see you here. So the 10 minutes is yours. Thanks, Tadia. I think, uh, thank you for your get uh, this webinar is very excellent for your getting. Uh, thank you uh, for our opportunity to uh, our presentation and uh, react the, the, the president for Dr. Sin. First of all, I would like to appreciate uh, to Dr. Sin also the ATSEA project for the preparation uh, uh, document uh, marine and land based of pollution assessment in uh, Aragura, uh, Timor, Seas uh, uh, region. Uh, because the, our presentation is limited time, only 10 minutes, uh, our react the, 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 the presentation uh, focus uh, on the uh, regional sea uh, perspective uh, to uh, follow up uh, the, 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 this assessment. Because uh, my our standing, uh, the assessment uh, to develop uh, for the preliminary information uh, to uh, to set up uh, develop cooperation in in uh, regional sea uh, Arapura and uh, Timor Sea uh, cooperation and how to uh, we work together yeah, among countries uh, in the region, uh, Australia, Indonesia, Timor Leste, and so on. This is very important initiative uh, for, for uh, the, the improve our quality uh, uh, in the, uh, this region. Uh, this next uh, slide. Yeah, this, uh, the, the presentation, Dr. Sin, we understood that the Arapura and the Morsis region is very unique in terms of uh, ecological, geography, and also socio-political uh, structure. Also under uh, presentation uh, Dr. Sin, uh, we uh, uh, have information that the, the, the marine pollution is one of our five primary environmental concerns in the uh, Arapura uh, Timor Sea region. Uh, we have the habitat degradation, uh, climate change, also uh, many issues in, in, in the, the region. Uh, and, and marine pollution is one of our five primary environmental concerns. Uh, next, yeah, uh, for the uh, background, our uh, react uh, the 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 the, the comment, uh, presentation. I would like to uh, introduce uh, the definition of the marine pollution. The marine pollution is a combination of chemical and trash, 
most of this come from land shores and in sewers or blown into the ocean. This is uh, the, my understanding. If we talk about marine pollution, not only uh, sea bears, we talk about land based and sea based source. This is why, in our, our uh, uh, title, the presentation, we focus at the, the not only uh, land based and sea based uh, uh, source, part of marine pollution. Next. Yeah. Based on presentation, we highlight uh, the, the, the marine and land-based pollution assessment. At least we uh, note uh, five uh, highlight the, 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 the main document uh, information. Uh, first, from both and land sea, the ITS region is being suffocated by pollution from human waste, sediment, and oil spill from land-based and so for sea base. ASEAN region is under the threat of oil spill and marine debris. This is, uh, they are, they are, they are log logical thinking process. Also, they are scoping, uh, uh, scoping a priority, how many uh, area the pollution. And after that, uh, uh, the categories, the, the priority, focus on oil spill and marine debris. And also, there are, there are uh, information about lack of a regional collaborative platform for oil spill uh, response. And uh, there are need to develop a regional platform for oil spill response, and also need to establish a regional monitoring program on man debris. This is, we highlight the, the, the presentation for uh, Dr. Sin, uh, this, uh, the document. Okay, thanks, and next. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, the assessment of pollution in the Arapura uh, uh, also Timor uh, Sea's uh, assessment. This is uh, why uh, uh, step uh, to 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 we develop a regional SIS program in the, this area uh, uh, at Arapura uh, uh, and uh, Timor Sea's uh, 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 program. This is uh, a regional must be in uh, in in line with. Uh, achieving the target sustainable development goals, uh, aligning the regional objective, uh, goal and target, and also accelerating the inform implementation of the strategic document through national and regional action. This is very, very, very important, uh, not only in regional action, also they are, they, are, they are in line with national action and regional action. Also to setting up a regional uh, coordinate mechanism, in developing national report, because uh, we not develop, develop uh, the, uh, the, bar, uh, the 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 main report also based on the national report, uh, we uh, uh, develop mechanism and, uh, or with the targeting the shares regional seas. Also, uh, uh, there are a regional partnership under the global multi stakeholder partnership. This is all very important to inline the, 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 the activities in the Arapura Timor Sea with regional partnership, also part of the global multi-sector, multi-stakeholder uh, partnership. Next. Yes, I would like to highlight how to develop regional seas uh, based on the uh, uh, information the pollution in the Arapura Timor Sea. The, 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 the next step must be in line with a multilateral and parental agreement, also with the United Nations General Assembly and also UNIA resolution. For example, for oil spill, uh, the, 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 the initiative must be in line with international convention for uh, on oil uh, pollution preparedness and also uh, uh, response eh, and cooperation. Uh, for, for, for example, for countries uh, like Indonesia, also Timor Leste, they'll, uh, they'll process to ratif ratify, ratif ratify the, 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 the convention. The first, uh, uh, the, the uh, principle must be effectively apply ecosystem based management or the, to develop uh, integrated approach, not only ecosystem, also uh, in, uh, interlinking ecosystem with human and also with. Uh, Adaptation management response and, and also uh, related to uh, uh, information and environmental sensitivity uh, area. All the, all the cooperation must be uh, protect marine environment 
not only from uh, CBS also for lenders uh, activities. This is the 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 the, 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 the equilibrium uh, issue and uh, for lenders are also CBS. Also, how to strengthen capacity for coastal and marine governance, and how to promote resource efficiency and productivity uh, for sustainable uh, material and use, and also strengthening uh, coordination and capacity for state of marine and environment reporting based on the reporting in country uh, in the this uh, area. Uh, how to strengthening coordination uh, uh, and capacity uh, for the deliverable, uh, the, the reporting uh, related to in this area. Okay, next. Now, based on the, 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 the principle, uh, how to develop uh, cooperation to, uh, to uh, mitigate the pollution in uh, Arapura uh, Timor Sea area, the first step after, after this uh, uh, we uh, develop uh, assessment, we must to follow up for stock taking of modality in the ASEAN region, stock take of existing activities and action, for example, how to uh, develop monitoring monitor and how to uh, uh, mechanism to 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 uh, to, uh, to respond uh, oil spill in ASEAN region in uh, if, uh, for the, the member countries in ASEAN region into. Uh, such as uh, the focus may uh, and also oil pollution. And the second, the stock taking carried out in order to gather information about ongoing and planned activities by stakeholder group that address, for example, marine and also uh, oil spill directly and indirectly. And third, how the, the finding of the stock taking aim to assist in building the long-term capacity that would allow more strategic en engagement in the overall process. Uh, based on the Dr. Sin presentation, we understood that there are there are uh, different uh, capacity uh, among countries uh, to, to to handle this issue. Uh, uh, this is important. We stock take the, the 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 capacity building and also the main implementation to 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 to, to running the activities. After that, this is very useful for us to to, to work together in the uh, ASEAN region. Next. For the next process, I think uh, this is important to develop stepwise approach in the ASEAN region. As you know, under this scope, the, in the ASEAN region, we already, already have a transboundary diagnosis analysis document. This is a, a foundational capacity building, enabling environment, basic policy, and cooperation framework. After that, uh, under uh, this uh, ASEAN cooperation, we have also a strategic action program to strengthen policy and legal and institutional framework. This is the, the era for us to implement the strategic action plan with transformational uh, change. For uh, move to transformational change, we need to stepwise approach to enhance capacity building, know how lesson learn, knowledge sharing through collaboration and partnership involving government in financial institution, private sector, civil society, and expert at the ASEAN region. Also uh, need to improve the coordination, engagement, and support of the world in the ASEAN region, and foster the linkage to relevant platform and international initiative for effectively delivery in an integrated manner. We, uh, we would like to to how to develop ASEAN region uh, also in the, in the linkage with uh, relevant platform and international initiative. On uh, the third, how to encourage and exchange of information, practical experience and scientific and technical expertise, cooperative and collaborative action and partnership in the ASEAN region. This is uh, our uh, recommendation of how to step wise approach uh, for the follow up, uh, the, the this uh, uh, report uh, uh, assessment on marine pollution in uh, ASEAN region, and the last slide, I think, but uh, I would like to uh, inform uh, how to link is the ASEAN region with a uh, regional capacity center uh, uh, for this agenda. As you know, I would like to inform uh, the regional capacity center uh, established since 2019. 
uh, we uh, in order to assure the commitment of Bali declaration uh, uh, on protection marine environment from land based activities. RCTSS is to be a hub for strengthening capacity building in the field of protection of marine environment from land based activities, in particular uh, nutrient, wastewater, uh, med litter, and microplastic. RCTS will function to post linkage to regional seas, also regional seas with Asia region, other platform, platform and international initiative. This is, uh, I would like to introduce uh, in the last slide related to our link. Uh, next step, the, 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 our activity in the uh, Asia region with uh, RCTS agenda. Thank you, uh, Tanya. This is uh, our short presentation. Uh, I would like to have to happy join in the discussion. Jason, thank you very much. Thank you, Pak Dida, for the wonderful presentation. Uh, and it's really short and sweet. Uh, and I believe there's a lot of feedbacks and also questions from the participants as well. Um, so please stand by. And I would like to invite the last but not least, the most beautiful uh, respondent here in the panelists, um, Ms. Adelina. Hello, Ms. Adelina. Okay, so before I invite her, uh, we can see the profile of Ms. Adelina together on our screen. So the committee, thank you. Okay, so Ms. Adelina Melissa, SDMSC, is a senior consultant in Oil Spill Response Limited, Singapore. So she is based in Singapore. Uh, she has professional experiences for the past eight years on this uh, field of oil spill. And uh, she is she has a lot of various experiences and also um, awards, perhaps, uh, on these, um, these expertise. So I think before uh, I jump in with the profile, I think I'm just going to hand over directly to Ms. Adelina. Thank you. Minutes, Thank you, yours. Tanya, for the introduction. Um, I'm trying to share my screen, but it says it's disabled. Okay. Okay, uh, now I can. All right, um, so yeah, thank you again, Tanya, for the introduction and previous um, speakers and respondents. So before I start, I just like to uh, mention something that my mentor used to told me uh, before. Um, so she told me like oil spill is basically just like an infectious disease. So if you imagine like COVID-19 that we're all like in the middle right now, um, it doesn't really matter whether you're a rich uh, country or a rich person or not. It doesn't matter whether you're prepared, ready or not. It can still happen to you. It can still hit you. And it doesn't really discriminate. And the thing about oil spill is that one, once it happens, and in worst case scenario in marine environment, as you can see from the case study Dr. Shin had before, it can sp spread so big and so wide and impact many of our shared resources, shared territories. And that's why it is our shared responsibility to be prepared to ensure that we are ready. So in this opportunity, I'd like to um, respond or address uh, Dr. Shin uh, key recommendation about building that regional platform, how we can share our responsibilities in a platform. And I would like to also discuss what are the existing regional platform around us in the regions nearby, highlighting their key difference and key similarities. And hopefully this is something that the uh, ATS region can reflect upon and hopefully adopt uh, whatever that is applicable for uh, the ATS region. Okay, so before uh, I'll start with uh, introducing where I'm coming from first, uh, just to give you, uh, give you all a context and background. So I'm from OSRL, All Spill Response, uh, limited. We are uh, the largest um, industry-funded corporation. We exist to respond to oil spill around the world. So we've responded to many oil spills since the 80s, uh, uh, including the Montara incident that Dr. Shin has in his uh, report, uh, assessment report. Um, we've provided preparedness services also because we believe that the key to the successful response is being being prepared. Uh, we operate in a membership basis, so we have industry, uh, members from the industry, uh, majority of the oil companies, so about two-thirds of global oil productions, they are all uh, OSRL members. We also have members from the government entities and the authorities around the world, and um, we have presence uh, in uh, about 11 strategic locations globally. 
which are ready to provide subsea and surface uh, response, oil spill response. So we've also involved a lot in regional uh, cooperation and regional collaborations in various capacities. And we've been trusted by various government and authorities to work with them in building their national capabilities. So to give you a few examples, uh, we've been recently uh, engaging a lot with the Papua New Guinea authorities and MSA. Um, we've helped them establish a tier two, a national capabilities within the country. They've uh, resource, They've just got uh, a large OSR resources for their um, tier two resource in country. Uh, they have a tier two uh, membership with us as well, and um, they're soon going to be joining OSRL membership as well. We've also um, engage a lot with authority in Australia, AMSA, mainly in uh, running exercises um, at least every year. So uh, other than those two, uh, Pacific Island, uh, we've also been engaging a lot. I've had a little bit case study on that later. And we've also been involved uh, and working with uh, various countries in this region, as you can see in the slide. So to draw on um, like our experience and our unique um, perspective uh, being an industry funded cooperative and working with uh, various regional cooperation on cooperative. Uh, I would like to just um, use these four examples today and to highlight what are the difference, what are the similarities. So I will use NOPAP, uh, the regional collaboration in Northwest Pacific, GOT, the Gulf of Thailand. I think Dr. Shen mentioned that briefly in his uh, presentation as well. Uh, GIC, uh, the Global uh, Initiative in Southeast Asia, and also the PAC plan, the Pacific Island ones. So for NOPAP, uh, which is the Northwest Pacific uh, Action Plan, uh, NOPAP and GOT partnership, the Gulf of Thailand partnership, is quite similar in a way that they are both uh, government to government cooperative. So they are led by the governments. Um, although they are at different stage, so NOPAP is much uh, started much more earlier in the 90s, and they are very, very pretty much stable state right now. All the four countries member, which is China, South Korea, Japan, and Russia, have ratified and fully implemented the um, OPRC 90, the Convention in Oil Spill Preparedness, um, which means they have established their national capabilities and they have regional cooperation built upon that. Um, they have uh, all the meetings, regional uh, on annual meetings, trainings and exercise uh, regularly also. And on top of that, they've done a lot of projects like sensitivity map mapping in the regions, uh, building those online pollution reports and so on and so forth. So they have done quite a lot uh, in that uh, region. Meanwhile, for the Gulf of Thailand, the partnership is still quite new, quite recent. Um, they're still on their way there and they still have a few homework to be done, but they've at least established the framework for the partnership back in 2006. Um, only one country in this uh, partnership that have uh, fully ratified and implemented OPRC, which is Thailand, but all three governments are fully committed uh, to this mission to strengthen their own national capabilities and in turn strengthen their regional capabilities. So also worth to note that they have that um, Gulf of Thailand uh, sub-regional oil spill contingency plan, which is fully aligned with the ASEAN regional oil spill contingency plan. So of course, these three countries also part of the ASEAN uh, regional framework. And um, other than the OSCP, they have also uh, dispersion guideline and they have also uh, the sensitivity mapping in the region. Uh, the next example is the GIC, the Global Initiative Southeast Asia. And I just like to, uh, to acknowledge that I think the project manager for the GIC is present among us. So um, if you have any question about GIC, I would probably like to invite uh, the project manager to uh, Mr. Lee Naiming to maybe say a few words later. Um, so the, 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 the difference between GIC and the free, previous two examples is that for GIC, it is led by industry and government. So industry through IPICA and governments through IMO. So the previous one was G2G. This one is governments and industry led together. Um, their mission is to assist the Southeast country to implement OPRC. And of course, 
overall enhance the OSPR readiness for all these countries. So you can start to see the key theme here is that in order for the regional cooperation to work, uh, they need to focus to also ensure that the individual countries do their homework and build their national capabilities, hence the mission of GIC also. And GIC have also uh, assisted um, in establishing the Asian Regional OSCP. Um, as you can see there, uh, not everyone have uh, implemented the OPRC, but um, it is still a work in progress and they're still on their way there. The Asian Regional OSCP basically provide framework for mutual assistance in, for all the countries in the ASEAN uh, community. So uh, moving on to the last one, this is a case study. This is the most recent one. Uh, so I'll start with a little bit of background. Um, if you are aware, there was a spill back in 2019 in the Pacific Island, uh, specifically in the Solomon Island, comes from a cargo vessel. The spill location is a little bit unfortunate because it happens near the world's largest raised coral uh, and it's also a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Um, it's a heavy fuel oil, so it's, very, it's quite devastating, the impact. The ship was owned by Hong Kong ship owner and it's uh, insured by Korean. Um, so they, the government of Solomon Island uh, requesting help from different countries, including Australia, and the, the cleanup ongoing uh, happens for a couple of months. So what happened after this is that they realized that uh, they need to be more ready. They need to start building their capabilities. So they've passed the bill, the Maritime Authority bill in Solomon within the same year. And also the Pacific Islands started to uh, build their and establish their regional OSCP within the same year also. So they uh, establish um, that, uh, and they also proceed to uh, establish a mechanism in obtaining a larger measure or larger resources by subscribing through RSRL. So you can see that um, uh, this as sort of like um, alternative measures or a temporary stopgap measures for the time being, because instead of like forcing all these uh, Pacific Island countries to uh, suddenly have immediately have a large oil spill response resources. They instead obtain these re, uh, access to these resources, guaranteed access to the resources to the existing oil spill response resources instead. So um, this is also another example or another uh, uh, way of having that original platform, regional um, sharing responsibilities. Okay. So just to summarize, key message from me in terms of regional collaboration, uh, importance of national capacities and capabilities because regional cooperation is built upon those, built, built upon the national capacities. There are various mechanisms in terms of regional framework and collaboration. So, uh, and establishing those capabilities, either building on the national ones or obtaining guaranteed access like uh, the, the earlier case study. Um, and acknowledge that in, in regional cooperation and collaborations, it's all about managing risk, who own the risk, but then uh, usually it's more in terms of like the industry uh, that is mainly responsible, but of course the government is also responsible in establishing, making sure the framework is there. Um, it's also a, pl a platform to share and learn from each other. Some countries may be at a different stage, different OSPR readiness. And those that are more established uh, usually can help with a roadmap, roadmap for those who are still on their way. And lastly, just wanted to highlight what um, OSRL is doing in this space and will continue to do so. So we help uh, the industry, we help government uh, promoting the best practice in oil spill response and preparedness. Um, we have worked with various regional platforms and hopefully we can also work with the ATS region moving forward. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Adelina. My apologies for um, Ms. Hat uh, for the cue card. So I think I will reread again. 
about your profile. Um, no so as what we've uh, we've read uh, and also hear from Ms. Adelina presentation, uh, she is currently a senior consultant based in OSRL Singapore, which she has led and delivered various oil spill preparedness projects, including contingency planning, uh, target capability reviews, design and facilitation of incident management exercises, and oil spill response training globally. And she has also an extensive field experiences gained through responding to various oil spill incidents. And Adelina is also actively involved in technical development and industry advocacy activities by participating in international conferences and leading the development of improvement of OSRL preparedness services. She also a part of the Global Initiative Southeast Asia or GIC. And this is also interesting that prior to joining OSRL, Adelina worked at a major multinational oil and gas company based in Indonesia as part of the crisis management emergency response and business continuity management team. So thank you for that holistic approach on presenting your feedback, Adelina. Thank you, Tania. Okay, so uh, that's all the three respondents that already gave their feedbacks. So I will re-invite Dr. Won Tai Shin to give his statement after hearing more from those three uh, speakers. Well, thank you very much. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you clearly. Okay, Th thank you very much for the respondents. And then uh, you made a very good points um, from the viewpoint of you, respectively. And then, uh, you know, uh, Dr. Fonseca uh, conducted a uh, uh, marine pollution assessment in Timor Leste, and then they identified the uh, IOU fishing and then climate change uh, as very important. Yeah, I agree with, with them. And then, you know, uh, uh, stopping IOU fishing is uh, very important. And then uh, it creates a uh, lots of uh, direct fishing gear. I, I agree with them. And then they, they have a conducted uh, assessment of uh, marine debris on the beach. I think that they studied a uh, four Beaches. And then uh, I will, uh, I will uh, include that study in my report also. I think uh, their finding is uh, help, helpful in understanding the situation of marine debris, uh, shoreline debris in the, in the region also. But at the same time, uh, we, we need to um, stress this fact that, uh, you know, we need the scientific information on marine debris. Just one time uh, collection of data, data is uh, not um, uh, cannot provide uh, meaningful um, information. So uh, I strongly suggest that uh, we need to initiate uh, ASCII, uh, ASCII uh, Marine Litter Debris Monitoring Program. This is helpful in uh, building awareness of the, uh, of the people and residents because we are mobilizing NGOs and residents in those mon monitoring programs. And then uh, uh, Pakdida, uh, working in RC3C, and then uh, your point is very, very good. And then I agree with you. And then we, the the importance of uh, stock taking in governance and then uh, region wide uh, uh, assessment is uh, quite necessary because uh, as uh, some someone here, uh, Nai. <laughs> mentioned that, that there are overlapping responsibility of organizations. Uh, there are lots of organizations working in this region. Yeah, I we agree. And then, but uh, you know the uh, the action. Um, uh, there are um, uh, organizations exist, but action is uh, quite limited. So we need to work on. We need to collaborate together, and then work on the specific issues. And then uh, uh, Ad uh, Adelina, Adelina. <laughs> I mentioned about the TIC initiative. This is a very important responding to a marine uh, oil uh, spill incident because you know we in the ASEAN ASI region, um, you know, except for Australia, we need we don't have uh, uh, capacity. So we need to build the capacity. We need to do the practice every year, and we need to practice mobilizing resources. And we have to equip the stocks. So this kind of uh, uh, initiative we need, and then I think uh, uh, OSR, OSR is is very helpful in this um, 
uh, uh, in this area. Okay, uh, I will leave. Uh, I will uh, stop my comment so that we can have an open discussion from the participant. I have uh, responded uh, uh, quite um, uh, comments and questions uh, through the chatting box, and then uh, you can raise questions now so that we can discuss. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Won Taishin. I think I can also re-invite again all of the respondents to turn on their videos. So if uh, the respondents uh, can also add up some points uh, for the answers from Dr. Won Taishin or ATSI2, uh, for each question, you can also uh, jump in and feel free to answer it again. Um, okay, so there are already uh, lots of questions and inputs. Thank you very much. The team of ATSI is already taking note for every point that you mentioned for all participants, whether it's through Zoom chat or Zoom Q&A box and also YouTube chat. But because of the limited time, uh, I can only address several questions. Um, okay, so there are some questions that already been picked up um, by the committee. So the first question is coming from um, Muralidaran. I'm sorry if I mispronounce it. Um, uh, he or she said that it is a good study, good account of oil spill pollution and marine debris. But why nutrient pollution and industrial pollution is not addressed sufficiently in this study? So I think Dr. Won Taishin can answer this question first. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> I was answering other questions. Uh, what was your question? Yeah, so the question is, why nutrient pollution and industrial pollution is not addressed sufficiently in this study? Oh, okay. Uh, you know, I already uh, answered that question. Uh, you know, lots of, uh, lots of uh, um, respond and uh, not, uh, you know, participant uh, asking about uh, other uh, sources of pollution like uh, nutrients and in the, you know, mining activities and then uh, uh, other pollution sources. Uh, but uh, as I said in the introduction, um, this study is a reason why, reason our assessment. And I try to uh, focus on the key, uh, key issues, uh, transboundary issues, and then uh, uh, key concerns in, in the ASI reason. And then I identify two issues, which is uh, oil spill and then marine uh, later, including direct fishing gears, because uh, uh, fishing is a very important source of pollution also. So, and then uh, localized uh, pollution like uh, uh, nutrients and mining uh, pollution, and then agricultural pollutants like the pesticides. Uh, they, I consider it all localized sources of pollution. And then when uh, uh, ASC Secretariat will launch and have launched a study on national study, and then those localized source of pollution will be dealt with those uh, uh, national reports. So uh, I have a limited, uh, you know, capacity to uh, uh, to produce this uh, uh, regional report, and I try to focus, uh, you know, qualitative uh, gathering qualitative uh, data and analyze uh, the impact of the sources of reason why the pollution. That's why I have a limited two pollution issues here in this report. Okay, thank you, uh, Dr. Shin, for the answer. Um, there is a question from YouTube from Christian mm -hmm. Novia Handayani. Mm -hmm. um, the question is, consistent monitoring in, is challenging here. Is mm -hmm. there any simple, robust method of the monitoring? so that the process can be adopted and conducted by communities, local activists, or students? Mm. I believe Dr. Shin can answer it first. Yes. Um, um, I, I don't know what is the challenge uh, in mobilizing uh, people. <laughs> um, I believe that uh, mobilizing NGOs and local residents for the uh, monitoring uh, money litter is a quite efficient and effective and I don't see it's a challenging. Why uh, I, I, I have to know why it's a challenging. Because, you know, um, like the, uh, I, as I said uh, in the uh, survey, uh, perception survey in Rota Endau uh, Regency, the local residents have a high awareness on the marine environment. 
So, and they are willing to release uh, the marine uh, animals they capture on uh, bycatch. So it means that um, they have awareness and then uh, I believe that they will, will, they are willing to participate in the monitoring pro program. You know, in Korean case, uh, let me <laughs> uh, uh, quote a Korean case, case. You know, uh, Korean uh, people, um, they are local NGOs, they are going uh, bi-monthly, once two months, and they are conducting the, uh, the morning litter activity. And then uh, sometimes they are bringing elementary school schoolers and sometimes high schoolers and then local other NGOs. And then this is a highly effective and then very efficient. And then the government provide very minimum amount of money. It's a very little amount, but they are willing to participate. So uh, I don't know why uh, it is a typical, but uh, we can try this, um, okay. you know, this um, uh, like a, a Korean case. So okay. utilizing NGOs, local NGOs, and I believe that it will be efficient and effective. Thank you, Dr. Shin. I believe that uh, maybe uh, Mr. Dida and also uh, Abilio can uh, add some points, few points, because the question was about how um, this monitoring is uh, a problem now in several countries uh, and they need uh, what's the tips and tricks also for monitoring and also evaluate it. And Dr. Shin has already addressed uh, his experiences and also his viewpoints uh, from uh, various projects uh, from other countries. And maybe uh, Pak Dida can add some points. Um, sorry, you are yes. still yeah. Okay, great. Thank you, uh, Talia. Uh, this is uh, the uh, interesting uh, question, I think, uh, for how the uh, cap for uh, the develop a monitoring program on marine litter. Uh, based on our experience, I think we have a, a capacity building uh, uh, in uh, under our regional capacity center for cases, cooperation with uh, United Nations Environment Program, also with Cicero. Uh, we conduct uh, 2019. We uh, uh, collect the, the information uh, for among countries in uh, uh, East Asian uh, countries. Uh, at least uh, East Asian countries, uh, they have a program that they monitor, but the, 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 the challenge how to continue the program in, in each country and also how to uh, uh, use the uh, same uh, inline uh, guideline how to compare uh, the result of monitoring uh, among countries this is also very important for this issue i think very important uh, how to develop uh, capacity building and this is uh, also issue in uh, asia region how we stop taking information the capacity in each country and also how the available uh, uh, guidance in this country uh, the use a guideline for example after that, how do we develop uh, 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 monitoring uh, together uh, with uh, each country? The, the monitoring at country by country, but how to integrate reporting uh, among country in the uh, Asia region? Uh, our our reason also related to the uh, focus uh, only in oil spill and uh, uh, metal. Uh, this is important uh, process for cooperation in uh, Asia region. Uh, uh, the process uh, to uh, to focus only uh, oil spill and uh, mad litter, uh, not only a technical process. Also, this is a, a decision process. How um, countries in uh, Asia uh, agree with uh, the focus uh, of the the issue of marine uh, pollution in uh, Asia region. And, and for this uh, uh, challenge, how do we uh, gather information, not only uh, marine litter and also uh, oil spill, because we, for a regional uh, cooperation, must be in line with national action. They are linked national action also in regional. If in the uh, national uh, level, there are activity like uh, it rest to nutrient, also I think must be also in line with uh, in regional also. Uh, to focus on the, the in this issue. Thank you, Tanya. Thank you, uh, 
Mr. Dida for the clear um, feedbacks and also a few points uh, from the countries. So I think um, Dr. Abilio uh, will give his feedback on the next questions, perhaps. So I think I will move on to the um, next question from the audience, which will be addressed to uh, Adelina and also Dr. Wontaihit. So please bear with me. The question is from um, Yoga. Uh, his question is regarding to the transboundary issues on oil spill. How is the best collaboration, not just among the country, but also with the oil company itself? So who should go first? Maybe Dr. Shin? Yes. Go ahead. Now, um, when oil spill happening outside of the uh, their uh, territorial sea uh, is the responsibility of the oil the drilling company, right? So usually um, <laughs> they don't have uh, any responsible material there on site. So they are relying on, uh, so they are uh, mobilizing OSR and other, uh, you know, collaborating with the countries. Like a uh, Montara case, uh, they uh, um, employ uh, OSR uh, Hercules to spread uh, this person and then uh, uh, collaborate with the AMSA uh, to clean up the, uh, uh, the spilled oil. Mm, but, you know, uh, always uh, oil, oil company, they are trying to limit their impacts. So that is a tendency. So all the, you know, negative impacts, uh, the coastal dwellers sh should receive, but, you know, they, the companies will, will never try to fully compensate the damages. They always try to limit their uh, damages. So what uh, the country need to do is they need to monitor the company, whether they have uh, enough responsible materials. Because, uh, you know, let's say that uh, uh, they are dr drilling uh, oil from the Timor-Leste territorial sea is a um, responsibility of ability of the Timor Leste government and then the oil company. So they have to collaborate together. But uh, I believe that the Timor Leste doesn't have any response to materials there. So when if the company doesn't mobilize, well, what it happened then? So um, the government has a responsibility. Now, um, does government has a capacity to handle uh, those, uh, those uh, or spilled oil? So this is uh, what we need to think about. Okay, uh, Adelina, uh, would you uh, uh, answer that question? Yeah, sure. Um, so I think uh, I would like to add like uh, and address a bit more on the collaboration part. So um, uh, yes, a lot of cooperation is government to government led, but there are also those like the GIC, the global initiative that is um, both industry and government involved. So the global initiative is not just in Southeast Asia. There are other global initiative around the world. So uh, in the in Africa region, in the in the Mediterranean region, in China, and also in um, Black Sea, Caspian, and Central Eurasia. So this is uh, they do their mission is quite similar. So um, they assist. Uh, countries in implementing the OPRC, they work together between the industry and also the government to develop the national structure, national capability, and OSPR, uh, the oil spill preparedness and response um, capabilities. So that's uh, one platform. Um, the other thing is also uh, what the industry can do more. Um, so, because uh, as an organization, OSRL, we're industry funded, so we're coming from the industry, uh, like by being involved in all this uh, space, uh, so the industry have done quite a bit of, on um, uh, developing good practice, uh, the best uh, good practice guide in, in terms of building those capabilities, conducting trainings, exercise, um, I think uh, some companies may have not been involved as much, so they could be encouraged to uh, contribute more and uh, join all these uh, initiatives that the others have, have started. So I think those um, two areas where the industry can collaborate more uh, in terms of uh, oil spill readiness. 
Okay, thank you. I think the answers are clear. Uh, thank you for helping me to answer the, that question. So now uh, there's another question uh, coming from the audience, uh, which is from Muhammad Koredima. And the question is actually for uh, Mr. Dida, but it is also addressed to the other panelists as well. Um, but before I read the questions, uh, I believe that um, Muhammad Koredima will address it personally. Uh, through Zoom, but while we're waiting for him to pop up on our screen, maybe I can uh, directly read and then he can add up if um, it's not enough. So the question is, uh, most district and provinces uh, has been put SDGs in their development planning. However, in the process of implementation, SDG is mostly abandoned. Do you think central government have to develop strong monitoring and surveillance tool to make sure the points of SDGs can be implemented well? And what kind of tools do you think most effectively implemented? I believe that this question is addressed because you also try to co correlate between SDGs and also the work that at C program uh, does. So um, yeah, I think I will just uh, ask uh, the questions uh, to be given feedback after you answer it. <laughs> so you can answer it first, Mr. Dida. Uh, thank you, Tania. Uh, uh, I think uh, uh, for the monitoring, uh, the implementation of uh, the SDGs, uh, 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 especially for SDG uh, 14 related to the uh, marine of pollution, uh, this is uh, uh, the, the, the ongoing activities. How to accelerate the, 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 the activities and how to monitor this is the, our strategy, how to put the uh, uh, SDGs uh, target in the national uh, uh, planning and also in the regional planning in the province. Uh, this is important because if uh, the document uh, and uh, global uh, commitment, if, if, if there are no uh, mainstreaming and the uh, national and regional document, this is uh, uh, very uh, difficult for the implementation. But uh, for all provinces, also in national, uh, we uh, already uh, put the, the, the target uh, SDGs, uh, especially target SC14, uh, also in the uh, provincial. For example, uh, how to uh, increase uh, uh, seawater. Uh, this is also we put uh, under uh, regional uh, uh, planning, also in national planning how to uh, uh, our concern related to the nutrient and also related to uh, meditator also this is a part of our uh, uh, integration in the uh, national do uh, planning document also in provincial uh, planning document thank you Tenia. thank you uh, mr dida i believe dr wan taishin can also uh, jump in to add some points uh, yes um, you know um Implementing SDC is uh, quite challenging because it has a so wide array of uh, works the local government have to address. Uh, but I don't know why uh, the, the question here, most districts and provinces, um, they do drop the program implementation. I don't know why, but you know, uh, whenever you look into the problem, or always have a two, two main reasons. One is a uh, lack of uh, fi financial resources. Second is uh, human resources. You know, those are two main reasons why all the programs and uh, uh, activities has, has to be dropped. You know, and then uh, the main, uh, another reason I can uh, focus is that uh, I can identify is that um, uh, a lack of uh, um, prioritization. Uh, they try to do so many things at the same time. But uh, what we need to do is to focus on few things so that uh, you, know, you, you can accumulate um, the success stories in one area and then uh, translate uh, the success, success story to others. So uh, you know, uh, I don't uh, believe that the central government have to develop strong monitoring surveillance tools um, uh, with a surveillance tool. I don't know if it will be successful, but what we need to have is a strong political will to, to implement those uh, priority programs. Uh, that's what you need to do. 
So, um, you know, uh, to answer your question, in summary, <laughs> we need to know why they drop, drop their implementation programs. But anyway, so that's my uh, ex uh, expectation in local area. So uh, in, in, uh, in, if I may add one more, uh, you know, that's why uh, ICM program uh, can help uh, implementing SDC. This is a very uh, successful tool to be implemented at the local area. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sheehan. I believe that's the uh, ending uh, process of our question uh, and answer session. I believe there's a lot of other questions that already been answered through Zoom chat. And also for those questions that is not yet being answered, do not worry because the ATSI team is taking fully noted for every inputs and also questions. And please feel free to follow us on our social media which is going to be uh, written in the chat box as well because we will present the report and also the follow-up answers through social media and of course through mailing lists um, so um, thank you once again for all of the respondents and of course for our speaker and uh, we are also uh, going to say our gratitude uh, for wonderful inputs. There's a lot of wonderful input, inputs given by Professor Karen Edifain and also Mr. Nining Lee uh, in the chat box. Um, and we will be uh, grateful to share it to Dr. Sheen and also for the rest of the at C2 team as we already try to summarize every point you write. Uh, you wrote uh, on the chat box. Um, thank you once again for those who are already joining as well from YouTube um, live streaming. So I believe it is the end of our program today. And I will remind you to uh, download all of the uh, materials of the presentation through the link below in the chat box. Uh, but we will also try to, okay, so it is shown now in these slides. So it's bit.ly slash markfall underscore presentation. And I believe it is a case sensitive. So don't forget about the caps lock and et cetera. And the link will be shared as well through the mailing list. And once you already leave this webinar room, there will be a short evaluation form that you can uh, fill out. Uh, but if you're missing that out, uh, the link of form uh, will be shared to you through the mail uh, on your email that is used to register on this webinar. So before we end it out, um, there is some um, points as well that is trying to be addressed from the ATSI team. Uh, we are going to promote another webinar uh, that it will be coming up uh, next month. So I believe the Etsy team can help me to share the screen of the poster. I believe uh, most of you will be really related to this um, issue as well. The live webinar will be held on 10 of June in 2021 at 9 a.m. in GMT plus seven. Uh, the topic will be about mainstreaming gender and social inclusion in fishery and marine sector in the Arafura and Timor Seas regions. And we will have various speakers um, and also remarks uh, from important persons uh, from ATSI, Global Marine Commodities, RF4 and Timor Sea Ecosystem Actions, GEF, PANSI, and also UNDP. Um, so please take a picture of the poster or follow our social media once again, because the poster is there um, coming up in our post. Okay, so I believe um, that's all for today. My apologies for any mistakes and also um, uh, other mishaps happening on this virtual webinar. Uh, once again, thank you very much for all the panelists and also the uh, participants. Uh, looking forward for your participation in the next webinar. So on behalf of the ATSI team, uh, I will end today's webinar with a video. Thank you all.
Thank you Bu Adelina, Miss Adelina, Dr. Wontashin.